Why study the seerah? Why should you be interested in the seerah? Why spend our time coming here and understanding the seerah of the Prophet wasallam? Well, the benefits are numerous. First and foremost, Allah has commanded us to know this man. This is an obligation that Allah has put upon us. We have to know this person. And there are over 50 verses in the Quran that command us to take the Prophet as an example. Of them, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآقِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ Indeed, there is for you, فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ In the Messenger of Allah, أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ An exemplary manner, a perfect conduct. Uswa means something you follow. Hasana means a perfect. So you have in the Prophet Sallallahu the perfect example to follow. And therefore, the study of the life and times of the Prophet Sallallahu is the study of somebody we need to follow. And the amazing thing, no matter which angle you look at the life and times of the Prophet Sallallahu you will benefit from that. So no doubt, the number one angle we look at it, in terms of religion, in terms of how we worship Allah. Also we look at the seerah in terms of manners and morals, in terms of mercy and tenderness. Also we look at the seerah in terms of leadership. What did the Prophet do as a leader? We look at the seerah in terms of how he was as a father and a husband. And we will find benefit in this. So no matter which angle you look at the life and times, the purpose of risala, the purpose of Allah sending prophets, is that we have a living example to follow. Allah tells us in the Quran that if we had wanted, we could have sent angels. There's a verse in the Quran that if we had wanted, we could have sent angels. But what would you have done if we had sent angels? You would have rejected. You would have rejected it. Why? Because you would have said, we can't be like that. These are not our species. How can we follow them? So of the Perfection of Allah's wisdom is that He sends human beings, flesh and blood, people like ourselves, born of women, married and having children, just like us. But the difference is they are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are made role models and examples. Another blessing of studying the seerah is that the seerah is the number one way to increase our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The number one way, there is really no other way as effectively and as powerfully to increase our love for the Prophet than by studying his life and his times. And this is a sad fact of our ummah that unfortunately we have neglected this study and we have sidelined it. And most of our children are ignorant completely of the seerah of the Prophet They don't even know the names of his children. They don't even know the basic dates. When did he immigrate? How old was he when Wahi came down? And yet they know so much of this dunya that it is embarrassing. It is embarrassing for us as parents that our children know so much of movie stars and actors and, and, and sports uh, personalities. And they have no clue as to the real person whom they should know about. And so by studying the seerah, our love for the Prophet ﷺ increases. And conversely, it demonstrates our love. It's a two-way street. When you study, your love goes up. In order for your love to go up, you need to study. And if you truly love this man, you will study him. And that is because a sign of loving someone is to want to know more about them. A sign of loving somebody is to want to know more about that person. This is human nature. So for example, when I'm traveling, I call up my children, I say, what did you do today? I mean, who cares what they've done? That doesn't affect me. What did you have for breakfast? I ask my children. Who cares? I mean, it's not going to affect me. But this is a sign of love. Because when you love somebody, you want to know everything about them. So anybody who claims to love the Prophet ﷺ, but he doesn't study his life and times, Wallahi, the fact that he doesn't study is a sign he doesn't love. If you claim you love this man, and yet you don't care to study him, you don't care to read his biography, you don't care to find out facts about him, what type of love is this? This is not a love that we understand as human beings. So... To study the seerah is a sign of love, and through studying the seerah, we increase our love. It's a circle. The more we love, the more we study, the more we study, the more we love. Understanding the seerah, also a third benefit, understanding the seerah also helps us to understand the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an is a very complex book, it's a very profound book, and it cannot be understood without context. You cannot understand without context. So when you hear, for example, I just recited right now, وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى 
Your Lord has not abandoned you, nor has He shown you any harshness. You will not understand this verse until you understand the seerah, when it was revealed. Why was it revealed? The context of its revelation. That the Prophet ﷺ was facing persecution. And he was wondering, why isn't Allah helping me? Why isn't the Nasr of Allah coming? Why isn't the Wahi coming? Why isn't the Qur'an coming? For weeks, no Qur'an came down. And the Prophet ﷺ began thinking, maybe my Lord has abandoned me. What is, and this is early on, the first year of revelation. The first year of revelation, and shaitan is giving him bad thoughts. And so immediately Allah reveals, وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ وَالضُّحَى Sign of optimism. Duha is what? What is duha? The breaking of the light, right? To this day amongst humanity, what does duha signify? New day. Light is coming. Right? So this is an optimistic sign. And Allah is telling him, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ مَا قَلَى وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى Be patient. What's going to happen is better than what you're having now. Right? It's the beginning of the day. The dawn is coming. The sun is coming. So until you understand the seerah, the surah doesn't make any sense to you. So by studying the seerah, the Qur'an gains meaning, profundity. Without the seerah, the Qur'an is without context. Without context, you will never appreciate the Qur'an. Another benefit of studying the seerah, the seerah raises our hopes, lifts our spirit, and blesses us with optimism. Especially in our times when we're facing... Islamophobia, we're facing a little bit of persecution. Wallahi, to call it persecution is, is even embarrassing when we look at what the Prophet ﷺ and the early Sahaba suffered. We in America are not being persecuted in that sense. Nonetheless, times have changed from the last 10 years. And things are happening now, we're facing a little bit of the heat. We need a source of direction, a source of optimism. And by studying the seerah, we can understand that the people before us suffered even more. And we compare our trials and tribulations to their trials and tribulations. And in fact, a beautiful point here, the Qur'an tells us that Allah is telling the Prophet ﷺ the stories of the earlier Prophets, i.e. the earlier seerahs. Why? وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فؤادك. We are going to recite to you the stories of the previous prophets in order that your hearts attain affirmation. نُثَبِّتْ بِهِ فؤادك. We're going to make you feel more firm, increase your optimism. So, think about this. Our Prophet ﷺ heard the stories of the earlier prophets. What did that do to him? Gave him more optimism, increased his iman. How about us then? Don't we deserve even more so that our iman goes up when we study the life and times of the Prophet ﷺ? So the studying of the life and times of the previous generations of the Prophets of Allah, it brings about an immediate benefit. لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ To resolve, to affirm your chest, i.e. to increase your iman. Yet another benefit of studying the seerah, and this is something many of us don't really uh, think about, the seerah itself is a miracle of the Prophet ﷺ. When somebody asks you, what are the miracles of the Prophet And we start thinking, the splitting of the moon, the talking of the tree, this, that, this, that. And we don't think that, that in fact, his whole life is a miracle. From beginning to end. His whole life is an indication that he was a Prophet of Allah. Coming from where he came, with the education or lack of education that he had, and yet coming forth with the message, the profundity, the scripture, the eloquence of the Qur'an. Where did this come from? In addition to that, his patience, his perseverance, his success, coming in the middle of a pagan, ancient civilization that had no... There was no civilization. They didn't even have a script. They didn't have two-story buildings. They didn't have a library. They couldn't even read and write. And yet the Prophet ﷺ came from the midst of a backward, uneducated, uncivilized, barbaric nation. We're going to talk about this next week. They were really a barbaric nation. And within 50 years, within 20 years, look what happened. Within 50 years, Islam began to spread. Within 100 years, it ruled the world. This is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the seerah is the beginning of that miracle. How he lived, the power that he wielded, and yet the simplicity with which he lived his life. The sacrifice that the Sahaba would have done had he asked them to do, but he didn't. And it is impossible for a human not to be affected by that power, by that luxury, by that wealth, unless there is really a divine sincerity in him. A pure sincerity that this is being done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And the famous scholar Ibn Hazm from Andalus, the famous Andalusian scholar, Ibn Hazm says that, Wallahi, if the Prophet وسلم, had not been given any miracle other than his life and his times, it would have been sufficient to prove that he's a Prophet from Allah. If he hadn't been given any other miracle other than his seerah. His seerah is the best indication that he is a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course there are multiple facets here, his own life and times, how he revolutionized Arabia, and how he changed the entire world from where he came from, a humble origin, a shepherd of Mecca. And what happened with the messages that he came with, immediately becoming within 20 years, and, and we're going to get to this point, I'm jumping, jumping the gun here, but nobody could have ever predicted that a group would come from Arabia and destroy the Persian Empire and start knocking on the doors of the Roman Empire and start diminishing it until finally it wiped that. It, nobody could have ever predicted that a group would come from Arabia with a new religion, a new theology, a force that cannot be equaled with the mighty empires of Rome and Persia. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the doors and Allah Azza wa Jal allowed these group of people who were less educated and less even, if you like, civilized, meaning the Sahaba did not have the type of civilization that the Romans and Persians did. They didn't have the weaponry. And yet Allah Azza wa Jal blessed them because they were Muslims, because they had this religion. So by studying the life and times of the Prophet ﷺ, we see his miracle. We see the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him. Another benefit of studying the seerah, is that the seerah lays out a precise methodology for the revival of the ummah. You know, there are so many groups out there, we call them these Islamist groups, trying to revive the ummah. Each one has his own ideology, his own methodology. Well, why don't we begin with the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ? Let us see how he began. If you want to bring about izzah and honor and glory, let us look at what the Prophet ﷺ did. Because he began in the middle of nothing, he began literally from scratch, literally from zero. And within his lifetime, look what happened. So you want to see a methodology of revival? We look at the ummah today and our hearts bleed. We look at the ummah today and we see what is happening and, we're, and we wonder why, oh Allah, why is this happening? And we ask, how can we revive the state of the ummah? The response by studying the seerah, we see a methodology, a plan of revival. By studying the seerah, we also see the life and times of the best generation who ever lived. And that is in a generation of the sahaba. The best generation who ever lived, as we firmly believe, radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah says this in over eight or nine verses in the Quran. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them. They are pleased with Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best of all generations has been my generation. Khayru ummatin qarni. The best ummah is my ummah, meaning that of the Sahaba. And Ibn Mas'ud said, that Allah looked at the hearts of His servants and He chose the purest and the brightest heart to be that of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And then He chose the, the purest and brightest hearts and He made them the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So by studying the seerah, we study the stories of Abu Bakr and Umar, the stories of Anas and Jabir, the stories of Sa'd ibn Mu'adh and Talha and Zubair, and we, our Iman goes up as well. These were legendary people. These were people, their life and times, they inspire us. Their sacrifices, their struggles, their perseverance, their patience, each and every one of them is a role model for us. And there is a, a, an athar uh, that uh, it might be slightly weak, but the athar concept is authentic, that my sahaba are like the stars. My Sahaba are like the stars, whichever one you follow, you're going to be guided. And the point here is that the Sahaba are role models for us, each and every one of us. Of the benefits of studying the seerah, is that the seerah brings about knowledge with which we can defend the honor of our Prophet wasallam. The Prophet's honor has always been attacked from day one. The Quraysh fabricated things against him. Sahirun kathab. They said this is ifkun muftara. They said he is a madman, he's a magician, he's a poet, he's this, he's that. Because nobody can explain how the Quran came. You have to invent some explanation, right? Where, where did this unlettered shepherd get the Quran from? Even the Arabs, the Quraysh had to explain. So they invent the most preposterous claims. They said he's a magician. They said he's a madman. They said he's this. They said he's that. Well, the propaganda began back then. It continues to this day. And each one of the charges that the Prophet ﷺ was accused of, the Quran defends against it. 
And each one of the charges later people invent, we need to turn to the seerah and defend against the Prophet ﷺ. In our times, how many people are saying that our Prophet ﷺ was a bloodthirsty terrorist? This is exactly what they're saying. They're saying he was a womanizer. He married this, he married that. My dear brothers and sisters, if you want to defend Rasulullah, how do you expect to do so when you don't know his life and times? If you want to defend your Prophet, how are you going to do so when you don't know whether these things are true or not? And if certain elements are true, how do we understand them? And when we put them in context, then insha'Allah ta'ala, it is easier to explain. So by studying the seerah, we will be able to defend the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And there is no way to defend him other than by studying the seerah. And that is why the early scholars of Islam, the Sahaba Tabi'un Taba Tabi'un, they would teach the seerah just like they would teach all of the other sciences. Ali ibn al Hussein, the great grandson of the Prophet, he said, We would teach our children maghazi, meaning the maghazi is the early word for seerah, the expeditions of the Prophet, just like we would teach them the Quran. You see, this is how they would raise their children seerah and the Quran. You need to teach your children the Qur'an and you need to teach them the seerah along with the Qur'an. And so the curriculum in early Islam was really composed of Qur'an and seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And I encourage all of you to start the same with your own children. That instead of reading bedtime stories of ancient Greek pagans, right? Why don't we talk about the life and times of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talk about the Sahaba and there are so many books of seerah for the children that these are the stories that our children should be uh, raised upon and listen to and hear. So to summarize the benefits of studying the seerah, we can say that the study of the seerah is in fact the study of the best and the best and the best and the best. What do I mean by this? It is the study of the life and times of the single best human being who ever lived. Now we firmly believe as Muslims that the Prophet ﷺ, all the Prophets are good and pious and holy, and the Prophet ﷺ is the best of them. As he said in a hadith, Ana Sayyidu Waladi Adama Yom al Qiyamati Wala Fakhr. I am the Sayyid, I am the leader, the paragon of virtue of the children of Adam, and I'm not saying this out of arrogance, wala fakhr. I'm not saying this to boast. This is a factual statement that Allah has told me. So by studying the seerah, we study the best person. And the best time, because the best time is the time of the Sahaba. The best people are the people of the Sahaba. The best place, and that is Mecca and Medina. These are the holiest cities on earth. And it is the seerah that brought prominence to these two cities. We firmly believe that Mecca was holy, but who believed it was holy? Who knew it was holy? Who cared it was holy until the seerah came? And as for Medina, it became holy in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, I am making Medina holy like Ibrahim made Mecca holy. By the permission of Allah. I am declaring Medina to be holy like Ibrahim declared Mecca to be holy. So the seerah is the life and times of the best human, in the best era, amongst the best people, and living in the best of all cities. In every angle, it is the best of the best of the best of the best. The best person, the best time, the best place, and the best generation. And therefore, studying the Prophet wasallam's life and times is studying our religion, it is studying the rise of the phenomenon of our religion, it is studying how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought about the revolution of Islam. He brought about an entire change of mind, how Islam changed the world. And by studying these 23 years of the life of the Prophet it's only 23 years from his risala. 23 years, the miracle of the seerah will benefit us in each and every aspect.